That Reef Show. That Reef Show. That Reef Show. This is That Reef Show. This is actually my second bottle because the first bottle works so well. It's uh, Brightwell Aquatics Razor for the saltwater aquarium. I had hair algae. I don't know if you saw in one of my videos, but I had hair algae everywhere in my tank. And I used this for a week, and the hair algae turned gray, and then I just brushed it off, and <laughs> it's gone. So this is like my go-to backup now. It's good stuff. Does anybody use this one? I've never used this one. It's the, what is it called? The XP Aqua from XP Aqua, the Duetto ATO. I asked the distributor of the company if they could send me one of these. Uh, for the new Encore build we're doing, and gracious enough to send it my way. It comes with this dual optical sensor. I own a bunch of Reef Breeders ATOs, which I love, which are a little bit cheaper than this one, but they only have a single optical sensor, and so I'm really kind of stoked about this one. So, yeah, thanks XP Aqua for sending this my way. I can't wait to get this open and try it out. I'm actually really excited about this one. Doing some beta testing for my lights. Let's see what it looks like inside. So it comes with this chip. So my current lights are the Photon V2s, V2 Pluses from Reef Breeders, and when I install this chip, this will allow me to use an app on my phone to control them. Now, it's still in beta testing, but this is gonna be a game changer for those Photon V2s. So for any of you guys that, that use those Photon V2 Pluses, it's coming. App control for your phone is legitimately coming and it's just an upgrade away. Honestly, in my reviews in the past of the Photon V2 Pluses, the only downside was the controller. It was a pain to control. I've had this box for a while. I got the Marine Depot control board, and it's finally here. I don't even know what it comes with, to be honest. I'm just stoked to upgrade my DIY wood control board with this one. The LED kit, which I don't know if Marine Depot sells anymore. So I might have got one of the last ones, but the LED kit, is that all? Gotta outsmart it. These are like the lights that, that go around your, your television, so. I think this is the Marine Depot control board kit, I, I think. The control board mounting system, control board shelf accessory, and the aquarium controller French cleat fits both basic and deluxe board. I have no idea. I have no idea what that is. A lot of paper. No joke. No joke. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Nope, there's more paper. Comes with more paper. <laughs> that was a lot of paper. Comes with the standard black control board, the board shelf accessory, and the black French cleat. Super curious to know what a French cleat is. I'm sure some of you are out there laughing at me right now, being like, oh my god, this guy's an idiot. He doesn't even know about French cleats. <laughs> it's true. Sticky. I still don't know what a French cleat is. I looked at this diagram. I still don't know. It's like, it's like a little stand? What the hell does this thing do? Is it like a little shelf? I legitimately have no idea what this does. Board shelf accessory black. Oh yeah, look at that. Is this like a French cleat? Goes in here, up to five pounds. Maybe you could hold your coffee cup while you're working. The standard control board black color. Oh, this is so much smaller than I thought it would be. Uh, uh, that's not a bad thing. This is really nice though. Oh, it's got the MD logo there. It's like a cute size. Look, this is gonna look really nice. It's like, I don't even know what material this is. It's like, it's like a super thick, solid wood plastic mix. I have no idea, but this thing is like, is heavy. Heavy duty, that's nice. Oh, that's gonna look good. I just, I, I might have too many controllers for this board. I might have to get myself a second board. Logan, the owner of Reef Breeders, he has these lights back here. These are the Photon V2s. He has been working on an app to control his lights for years now. And it's finally ready to send out to like a beta testing group. I need to install this chip, I guess I would call it chip, into the Photon V2 Plus itself, looks like and he included some videos, and I think it's supposed to be pretty easy to install. I have waited two years, I've known Logan, two years I've wanted this to happen, and it's finally happening. So I'll show you guys as much as I can, I'll blur out what I can.
This is the part I have to replace. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. It looks like it just goes in that direction. Then I also have to replace the end plate because there's an LED light here. That was surprisingly easy to set up, but just one problem I ran into had to do with how to remove this piece. But let me turn around, let me show you. I couldn't get the, I don't, I don't know what you call this thing, the, the chip off until I realized you have to unscrew these metal things. There's two of them and then it comes right off. And there's just three power things to plug in. You have to plug in this power and then there's a power here and then a power here and everything else seems to fit really well. I had no idea that these would be loose, so I just have to make sure I can put them all back on. I think I'm gonna take this opportunity to clean the fans really well. But other than that, I'm gonna plug it in and see if it works. According to the instructions, the indicator LED should flash blue to indicate it is ready for pairing. That is very good news. It looks like it's working so far, it's connecting to my Wi-Fi. Okay, you ready? I guess right, here's the red, 100%. Oh, it works, look! Okay, red off, green, 100%. Yes! Logan, you did it! Okay, royal blue, 100%. White, 100%. I am so excited, you have no idea. Okay guys, this is for real skis. For any of you who have the Photon V2 Pluses, the app is the real deal. I'm gonna program it, but just know that it's coming. My only complaint for the last two years with these lights has been there was not an app. That is no more. As of now, 100% my go-to light, Photon V2's. Logan, good job. Man, this is fantastic. <laughs> I did something really stupid when I was installing the Photon V2 Wi-Fi upgrade kit. Let me just show you what I did so you don't make the same mistake. Of course you're not gonna make the same mistake because you are brighter than I am here. Let me flip you around real quick. Okay, if it's gonna focus, you see these right here? In order to install the chip, you have to flip these lights on its back. So I flipped it on its back, right? And being a complete idiot, I didn't put a towel down and I refinished this thing myself and look at what I did. Ugh, all over. I scratched the heck out of this thing. Ugh. Don't be like me, everybody. Hey Siri, what's the temperature outside right now? It's about 109 degrees outside. 109? What time is it? 549. It's cooling down the desert. For our first question and answer time, we are gonna look at some YouTube comments from My First Fish Tank and Marine Depot. So if you have a question you want answered, just leave a comment on a future That Reshow video. All right, Steve Fountain asks, Hi, what is the lifespan of dry reef rock once matured in a reef tank? Now I gotta say first and foremost that I'm not an expert and I've never pretended to be an expert. And I've never tried to be an expert. And I never wanna try to be an expert. Mainly because when you're an expert, you really have to devote all of your free time to a very specific area. And while I spend 60 to 80 hours a week in this hobby, I'm really a generalist and I've never really taken like that much of an interest in one specific area. So I'm gonna leave expert opinions to experts and I will always be here for beginners. So here's my answer. What is the lifespan of dry reef rock once matured in a reef tank? If you do it correctly, your dry live rock can last forever. You know, the real issues come in when when it becomes like a sponge, when it absorbs things like phosphates and nitrates. You know, then over time, the dry live rock can just be, become so full with all of these extra nutrients that it can start leaching it back out into the water column. And then you're gonna see spikes of things like nitrates and phosphates, and you might have huge algae blooms and other problems. So as long as you take care of your reef tank, this live rock, it could last forever. Good question, Stephen Fountain. Sean Solo 904 Fishing asks, we have a water softener. How does that impact the need or the cleaning of RODI? Good for the salt water solution or use spigot water from outside that is not the water softener system salt pellet version? That's a really excellent question and I have no expertise when it comes to water softeners, 
But what I would probably do personally is is I would just measure the total dissolved solids of both your spigot water and the water softener water and then just see whichever is less. You know, if it's very, very similar to each other, it probably doesn't matter. But my understanding, for example, here in Palm Desert in the Coachella Valley, we have very hard water, which means we have higher total dissolved solids. I, I, I think that's what the definition of hard water is when it has a lot of minerals and solids that are dissolved in it. Our, our TDS is like around 150. When I used to live in Seattle, Mercer Island, our TDS was somewhere around 40 something. So it was, it was, it was much softer water. But honestly, at the end of the day, you're gonna adjust your RODI filter to suit your aquarium needs. So yeah, if you live in an area with a lot of chlorine and chloramines, you might wanna buy a specific DI resin that's gonna remove some of those chloramines. You also might wanna put on like an extra carbon filter because carbon does absorb chlorines. So Sean Solo 904 Fishing, probably really doesn't matter. Test for TDS, see which one's lower, go with that. Jeff K, I've read that RODI units love high water pressure for better efficiency. I'm on well water, 45 to 65 PSI. I think I'm gonna need a pump at my RODI. Yeah, you're right, Jeff. RODI filters run much more efficiently and that's because of the, of the back pressure that you need created for your RO membrane. I mean, honestly, you don't need a high pressure for your carbon, for your sediment, for your DI resin. Water just passes through there. Sure, a higher water pressure is gonna be able to push through those at a faster rate, but where you really need it is for your RO membrane because reverse osmosis needs water pressure. And I actually have a link. If you go back, I forget which episode of that reef show it is, but you can also search in like RODI explained. It's from my word of the week segment where I explain all about reverse osmosis because osmosis is basically when water molecules travel through a semi-permeable membrane from an area of lower solute to an area of higher solute. So for example, if you have like pure water on one side and you have salt on another side, the water is gonna go towards the salt for various reasons, right? But when you have reverse osmosis, you're reversing that. So you're taking this area with the higher solute, with the salts and stuff, and you're applying pressure. And when you put pressure into that water, it forces the smaller particles, which is the H2O, through that membrane. So yeah, you do need to have good water pressure. So if you live in an area with low water pressure, yeah, just pick up a booster pump. That will help your RO DI filter run way more effectively and efficiently, and your product water will increase as well. If you have a question that you want answered, just leave a comment down below in any of our future videos with Marine Depot or My First Fish Tank, and we will try to answer as many as we can. Happy reefing, everyone. It's 2.04 in the morning. And I regret ever even conceiving of the idea for this video. First up, what we're gonna do is we are gonna be using this fancy hand-drawn chart that I made, and we're gonna be doing a test every hour on the hour of both the 120 gallon and the 24 gallon reef tank. And then in between the hourly tests, we're gonna play a little game. So I've compiled a list of things from around the house, from around the neighborhood. So here's how you can play along. You can just pause this video right now, take a screenshot and print out this game board or you can just go to my blog below and I'll put a PDF version that, that you can print out. And you are gonna guess in this column here to the nearest tenth, so 8.1, 7.9, what you think the pH of that item will be. Then when we test it, we're gonna put the answer over here. You're gonna score three points if you're exactly right, two points if you're off by a tenth, one point if you're off by two tenths, and zero points if you're three tenths of a percentage off. When we're completely done with the game, you're gonna total your points up right here, and then you're gonna leave a comment down below with your total points, and the winner or winners are gonna get some stickers from me, anywhere in the world. I'll send them anywhere in the world. I'll send you some stickers if you win, so be honest, okay, be honest. 
And before you decide to leave some sort of angry comment down below about how this pH checker is only designed for salt water, so all the other things I'm testing aren't accurate, I know, we're just trying to have some fun. Well, this is pretty boring so far. It's gone up and it's gone down and it's gone up and down. I think it's probably time to go outside and around the community and test some of the random stuff. So get your game board ready. Enough of this for now. Let's get back to the other testing and see how the tanks are doing. Well, it's 7 p.m. Here is the graph so far. The blue line is the 120 gallon tank. The red, maroon, whatever you want to call that is the 24 gallon. You can see a little bit in the morning, there were some, some highs and lows, you know, definitely a little bit lower in the morning for both the 120 gallon and the 24 gallon, but it really does even out both the tanks here. I mean, you can see the, the blue line, which is 120 gallon, had several hours of exactly the same, and what is that at? 8.3. The red, the 24 gallon's gone up and down a bit more, but really it's been within 0.1, so really pretty accurate. I've only done about half of the around the community games. Let's go finish those up real quick. An entire day with the Hannah Checker, I've tested it over 50 times. It works really well. So the only problem with this bottle, oftentimes you screw it on tight and then there's a little rubber piece inside that needs to stay in the bottle and sometimes it gets stuck on the top. Oh, there, see it did it. See that, look, oh wait, how am I supposed to get accurate drops when it sticks into the top? And this is, this is sort of a, a pain to get out. It, it doesn't just like come out like, and now I'm getting like reagent on my hand from trying to pull it out. So you have to like get your finger in there. Oh my goodness. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Okay, see right here. This little piece should not be coming out of the bottle. This goes back in here. Just don't screw it on quite as hard as I did and you'll be fine. You're gonna get a lot of tests for 50 bucks. This is gonna give you more accurate results. I'll come back at it tomorrow with the overall results of the entire day, newsflash, it didn't really change that much. But stick around till tomorrow morning. Okay, add them up. Here's the answers. Put your result down below and maybe I'll send you some stickers. 
Next morning, final check in here. Here's the graph. Not too much exciting to report. I did wake up at two o'clock, but I didn't put it on the graph. It was 8.2. If you look here, the only weird thing, if you look in the morning when I started at 8 a.m., both tanks had a pretty low pH for this graph. It was still at what? 8.0. Midday, you definitely see some trends here where it evens out. You know, you're, you're definitely more in the 8.3, 8.4 range. And then in the evening time, what time was it? 8 p.m., I had this weird spike, and I can't explain it because both tanks spiked to actually above 8.6, but it was just for that one hour, and then they went back down again. But there it is, the entire day's test using the HANA pH checker. All right, the first part, don't say all right, Matthew, that's a bad habit of yours. Clearish in nature, and I want you, no, let's get started. Let's do it. I'm stoked, let's, no. On both 120 gap. Matthew, don't look at yourself. How's everyone the graph so far? Nothing. Here's the. I was gonna start filming, but then I started doing some saltwater taffy, and that's really taken me quite a long time. It's really good though. Oh no, these things come right off. You gotta be careful. Careful! Oh, it's got the ND logo there. Autofocus, autofocus. When are you going to autofocus? Lumix G85 autofocus, you are the absolute worst. There it is.